If this light novel proves anything, it's that Harry Potter would have been a hell of a lot cooler if all of the students carried swords, Hogwarts was invaded by monsters on every single day, not just on Dark Lord days, and uh, you know, if magic just kind of drove most of the senior students absolutely homicidally insane. Hello everybody and welcome to my review of volume number one of Reign of the Seven Spellblades. This one written by Bokuto Uno with artwork by Miyuki Ruria. It's released officially in English by Yen On with a translation by Alex Keller Nelson. If you want to pick up your own copy of this one, I'll have links in the description down below. In Reign of the Seven Spellblades, we attend Kimberly Magic Academy a renowned academy known for turning out some of the most powerful mages that the world knows. There's only one downside to Kimberly when you enter into its doors. You're told as a first year that by the time you get to the graduation, at least half, if not more, of your fellow students will be gone. Either they'll have dropped out, they'll be dead, or they will be committed and be entirely insane. Does being insane and being committed count as dropping out? I don't really know. As the book opens up, we join first year students Oliver and Nanao. These two are from very different backgrounds, Oliver coming from a magical background where Nanao comes from a nation that magic is pretty much unknown and where the nation itself has been torn apart by clan warfare. Now, Nanao's been scouted to come to Kimberly by one of its professors, and really she knows nothing about magic, but she knows a lot about swordplay, something that's actually really useful at Kimberly because in this world mages have figured out that even someone who doesn't know magic, if they get close enough, they can kill a really powerful mage. And so the priority is to not only teach mages how to cast spells, but also how to wield swords so that they can defend themselves in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, during the opening ceremonies of Kimberly Magic Academy, Oliver and Nanao find themselves wrapped up in a rather strange and dangerous event. They end up befriending four other first-year students, and this group of six decide to hang together to try and make their way through Kimberly's dangerous halls. However, as the book proceeds, we find out that this First incident that happened at the opening ceremonies isn't exactly a single incident, but rather something that portents much larger machinations that are going in the background, and that potentially someone is trying to destroy a good chunk of Kimberly's student population, you know, before magic drives them completely insane or kills them. And so this group of six friends decides to do what they can to protect each other, and perhaps even unravel the mysteries that threaten one of their members in particular as the book progresses. Reign of the Seven Spellblades is a fantastic book. If you appreciate things like magical academies, magic battles, lots of sword battles, lots of action, but also incredibly good world building and deep characters, this is gonna be one that you want to check out. The pacing will keep this book compulsively readable for you. You will not be able to put this one down. And we're dealing with an author who has already written a well-received and well-regarded series in Alderaman on the Sky. So we're dealing with a very experienced writer who knows well how to build not only a series, but even just in an individual volume. This does not read like our typical web novel adaptations. This is clearly a novel that has been constructed to work from begin to end. Events that may seem benign in the beginning become increasingly important as the book goes by. Little things that are introduced to us as kind of like a throwaway world building become vital to our character's survival later on. And even when you hit the epilogue, which has some pretty shocking revelations, it won't be so shocking to the point that you won't have seen it coming in a way. You'll know what was building up to it, and while you'll be surprised, you will not be surprised. First off, it's worth noting that Kimberly is an incredibly interesting backdrop for this whole story to take place. Sometimes settings don't often get really paid attention to, particularly I find in light novels where a lot of them just take place in very like vanilla fantasy type settings. Kimberly has a lot of character to it. It's a school built on some ancient labyrinth that 
you know, people don't even really understand how it operates, but they do know that at nighttime, the labyrinth actually infects Kimberly with monsters roaming the hallways, and that students, as they grow up into their higher ranks and into their later years at the school, begin descending to deeper and deeper levels of the labyrinth just to hunt monsters, find artifacts, try to push themselves to become more and more powerful and to survive harder and harsher environments. This air of unpredictability and darkness that pervades around Kimberly Magic Academy makes it so interesting and means that really you just never quite know what's going to happen as if a student walks into the school just a little too late after classes, they could be facing life-threatening situations. Add on top of that a number of really good characters. There's six characters in this sort of main group that we open up this novel with. And while I won't get into all of them, it, it is interesting to note how the author makes these characters very fascinating by presenting them with sort of an overarching kind of archetype, but then filling it with all of these sort of surprises that will not meet your expectation. So, for say, Oliver, he seems like he's very studious. He seems that he has put a great deal of effort into making his magic powerful and reliable. However, Oliver has also spent just as much time learning magical comedy routines that really will have nothing to do with survival for him whatsoever, and yet we are made very aware that the techniques and everything else that he is using to perform these magical comedy acts are incredibly difficult and, if not dangerous, at the same time. The character of Nanao, who comes from this war-torn country where we realize that she has already killed people, numerous people, in violent and bloody disputes, is also probably one of the most bubbly, slightly air-headed, Go lucky characters in the novel. One of the other group members of the group, Kayla, is the stereotypical, you think, rich girl from a noble family who is powerful and knowledgeable because she's had the finest teachers and tutors, etc., etc., and yet she ends up being one of the most down to earth, supportive, and loyal characters, which is, again, completely against the usual stereotype for those people. Heck, even the Tsundere of the group is a dude, which, again, not typical. You have characters that have different backgrounds, different ideas and thoughts about how things should be done. One of the main conflicts that comes up between the characters is the treatment of humanoid non-humans, so particularly trolls. The whole idea is, is that these characters still disagree with one another, even though they're friends. Even though they try to at least see the other person's point of view, they at the same time are not giving in. They don't sort of, it, it's not a situation where we have characters that are just like unreasonable in their holding of beliefs or unbelievable in the way that they just let go of their beliefs. We have characters that feel real in this world that is being created. And while the magic system seems at times a bit simplistic, it certainly is satisfying enough in terms of how we're working with it in this novel. One of the things that I thought was actually kind of cool is that the uh, title, seven, the seven spell blades from the title of this one, are actually magical techniques and not physical blades. I kind of thought this was going to be one of those stories where let's find the magic swords, which probably would have been a bit more predictable and maybe even boring. But it's kind of interesting that this actually refers to techniques, techniques that magicians have combined with their sword play and their magic and everything else to create incredibly powerful techniques that really can't be duplicated. It's it's so much more interesting than just find the magic sword, wield the magic sword. And in a sense, I kind of feel like that is the best way to describe this book. As I've said, with the characters, with the spell blades themselves, 
you have certain expectations based on what you typically would get in a light novel taking place in a fantasy world, even at like a magic academy. And yet there's all these other layers going on underneath that kind of subvert those ideas or play those ideas in ways that you didn't really expect. It's this constant like new events and action and everything else that really helps this book propel forward. And we do have characters who have growth. We have secondary, heck, we have like third tier minor characters that seem to be introduced purely for the purpose of who's the antagonist for this chapter. And yet they end up having growth throughout that chapter and later on in the book as well. And in fact, play a bit of an important role, even if it's brief, later on in the book. As I said early on, this book really exemplifies a writer creating a novel. They aren't creating little chapters to plug into their web novels that people keep reading. This is an author who's crafting a story, a world, and is creating a book that has a beginning, a middle, and an end where all the events that you go through build upon each other and matter later on and as you progress through the book. And I'm pretty sure that that will hold true as you progress through the series. In fact, speaking to a few people on the Discord server, it's become apparent that this series actually becomes better with following volumes. However, what I was warned by one person was that this author has killed main characters before in Alderaman, and so even though those deaths weren't done just for shock value, they actually mattered and meant something within the story itself and belonged with the way that the story had progressed, you might want to be a little bit cautious about the whole getting attached too much to people because they may not survive. It's also worth noting that some of the magic in this book is even the horrific in itself. We have a, a character who essentially births monsters from herself. We have a character who wields the dead as his own personal armies. This is not magic that is cool or bright-eyed or everything's just happy except maybe one or two nasty spells. No, like magic just, it is a world altering thing and a reality altering thing and it does drive people bonkers. So like I said, it is a such a fascinating world that is being built in this book. We have it populated with characters that I enjoyed and that mattered and Again, we have all of these events meaning something. It's it's not just lots of throwaway stuff that by the time we get to the end, we're like, well, I liked it, but it doesn't feel like anything matters. And if I never read another one, meh. Instead, you get to the end of this one. And honestly, I could not wait to read more of this series when I got to the end of it. The way that the epilogue ends, like I said, again, it is one of those things that will leave you, it is surprising but in a way that works with the rest of the book, as opposed to being a surprise just for the sake of surprise. In a lot of ways, it's one of those surprises that kind of confirms some of these suspicions you've had as the book has gone along. And in the end, obviously, I loved this book. It is probably one of, if not my favorite read of the year so far. I probably shouldn't say that in this uh, video, seeing as how I'm going to be posting my top. 10 of 2020, but it might not make it to the top spot. We'll, uh, we'll see, but it's going to be near the top. That is for sure. Definitely a really, really good book. Uh, you know, just made me again, hope that this one does so well that Yen decides to bring over Alderaman because I've heard good things about that. And if the author's writing in that series as, as good as it is here, it'll be a definite must read. So if you like action, if you like magic, if you like, well, at times violence, and you like intricate plots, this one, definitely one to check out. I will say that there are a couple things that are a little bit typical in terms of the conflicts that are going on. There's a lot of sort of the politics going on at the school are going to be things that you are very familiar with, you know, rights of different creatures and that kind of thing. But again, handled in a way that worked so well in this world and still gave a little bit of a fresh spin on things. 
In this video, I want to say a special thanks to Jonathan McCabe, Renzoz, Sean Zipperer, Areouf, and VixLab.com for their support on Patreon as well as the support of all of my patrons that are allowing for the channel to continue, including our new host, CL. Uh, I hope maybe you've all checked that out. I'll put a link to the video of her introduction. Uh, she is going to be coming out with some light novel reviews, so definitely I hope you will check those out as well. I'm sure you will find that her style and so forth is much different than mine own. I, heck, might be in trouble. Maybe some of you will like it a lot better. But in any case, my patrons help with that. They help with this channel. They've helped this channel grow. They've helped with all the light novel podcast and helped as well with EnglishLightNovels.com. In short, I've got a lot of projects going on and all of them are partly possible because of the support of my patrons. So for my next review, I'm going to be sticking with Magical Academies, but um, let's just say that the main goal of the series is going to be a little bit different, as it's um, much more about romance. <laughs> I'm going to be reading volume number one of I'm in Love with the Villainous. Yes, we have a girl who gets transported to an Otome game, and she don't want nothing to do with those boys. She's going after the bad girl. That'll be my next review. That sounded really cheesy the way I put it. It's a lot better than that. I hope you check out my review of that one. That'll be next. In the meantime, thanks for joining me in this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.